Hi there, Honda owners. Today on your 2015 Honda Civic, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install Torque Lift's Eco Hitch. And this is what our hitch looks like when it's installed. It's a two inch by two inch receiver, so it's gonna be great for all of your towing needs, whether you're wanting to use this for accessories such as a bike rack, or if you're wanting to maybe get a little bit of work done or pull a little something with you like a jet ski trailer. You'll secure your accessories to your hitch using a 5 8 inch hitch pin and clip. Now, one doesn't come included with the hitch, but we've got plenty available here at e-trailer. And we also have locking ones, which I would highly recommend to protect your investments. And on bottom, we've got plate style safety chain loops. That has a pretty large opening that should accommodate just about every shape, size, and style. Our small one has no problem getting on there. And our big guy here goes on and off with ease as well. This hitch offers a 300 pound tongue weight, which is the force going down on top of our receiver. And that should be enough for a four bike platform rack fully loaded up with four bikes. You do just wanna pay attention to the weights because depending on the bike, it could be a heavier bike and you may not be able to have all four. The tongue weight rating is gonna include your accessory, so your bike rack, plus all the bikes on it. So just be careful when adding those up. It also offers a 2000 pound gross towing capacity, which is how much that it can pull behind it. And that's enough if you've got a small utility trailer, maybe a little John boat or a jet ski trailer, something like that, you could probably pull with this. Now, as always, I recommend that you verify in your vehicle's owner's manual and ensure you don't exceed any of its towing capacities. Now I've got some measurements for you to help you when deciding on accessories. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, it's right at about three inches. This is important when determining if your accessories will contact the bumper when inserted and if they can be placed in the upright storage position without contacting the bumper. And from the ground to the top inside edge of our receiver tube, it's right at about 12 inches. And this is important when determining if you need a drop, a rise, or a raise shank on your accessories. And since this one does sit solo, I recommend a raise shank on your accessories. Now that we've covered some of the features of our hitch, why don't you follow along with us in the shop and we'll show you how to get it installed. This one's not overly difficult to install, but we are gonna have to trim a heat shield and an under panel as well as get those down. So I would say give yourself about an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours to get this one installed. We'll begin our installation underneath the vehicle. We're gonna remove both the panel here at the back as well as the undershield. Now, your instructions really don't tell you to remove the undershield, but uh, pulling it down out of your way and stuff is just gonna be a big old fight. So it's much easier to just take it off and then we can put it back on afterwards. So we're gonna start by removing the fasteners across the back here. And there's one over there right on the other side of the exhaust as well. You'll remove these fasteners by placing your screwdriver in, giving a little bit of a twist and we don't want to twist real hard. These get really brittle and break pretty easily. We do have pin kits here at e-trailer, so you can get one with a selection of different pins for your particular make of vehicle. But if you take your time, just kind of work your way around it, get it to pop out of there. Uh, once you get it popped out a little bit like that, what I found works really well is to grab like a pair of side cutters or something like that that has a little bit of a kind of a sharper edge to it like this. We're not gonna cut this off of there, but that sharp edge really grabs good. And if you don't squeeze very hard, you can get underneath that lip there and pull these out. So we're now just gonna repeat that on the remaining ones. You can usually pull these out by hand, but if your vehicle's a few years old, maybe like three or four or more, then you probably got a lot of dirt built up in there and these can be really brittle and difficult to get out. And there's one more right behind the driver's side tire here for a total of six pins. We do also have trim panel tools available here at e-trailer, but for this particular style of pin, I prefer the screwdriver and side cutter method. And then on the driver's side at the back of the tire, if we go in and then up behind our panel, we're gonna find another fastener up here. We're gonna use our 10 millimeter socket to remove it. And then the panel that's just in front of the panel we're removing, actually kind of smashes up a couple of ears on this panel. So these two fasteners here, we're also gonna remove with our 10 millimeter socket. We'll then pull down on this panel a little bit to slide the under shield off of there. And then we're just gonna slide that back out of the way. That's gonna reveal the frame on the driver's side for us to feed in our hardware. And it's also gonna reveal a fastener that was hidden on our heat shield because we're gonna have to take this down as well. But well, let's head back to this panel here. This one here also needs to come off. It's just held in by kind of just uh, clips. So we're just gonna gently work our way across and pop it out of here. We can now lower down our exhaust. There's a hanger here at the very rear. 
we're using a little bit of spray lubricant to make it easier to slide off of there. And normally I would recommend supporting the exhaust, but our suspension here is gonna catch our exhaust so it's not gonna drop down that far. And we're just gonna pry this off of here. Just like that. And then you might have to take your hands in there a little bit just to pull it down to get it right underneath there. Then we're gonna head to the other side of our muffler there and we'll find another hanger here just on the other side of our suspension. We'll lower this one down as well. And this one can be a little bit trickier to get off, finding that right spot to get your pry bar in there. Just take your time and try to get the best grip you can. There we go. You got it most of the way popped off. Once you get it most of the way, you can usually just go up here with your hand, then and just pull it the rest of the way. There we go. And you can see here, it sits on our suspension here at the back. So it's not gonna come down any further than that. So now we'll remove our heat shield. We're gonna use a 10 millimeter socket to remove the four fasteners holding the shield on. You'll have one here, one over there. There's one in the back corner over there. And then there's that one that we revealed underneath that shield there. We can just kind of push the exhaust out of the, to the side to take these off. Once all those fasteners are removed, we can just pull this out and set it aside. We're now gonna feed in our hardware using the fish wire that comes in our kit. I went ahead and marked the holes here on the driver's side where the hardware is gonna feed in. It is gonna be different holes on the other side, so we'll show you those there. The method we're gonna use is gonna be the same though on how to get the hardware in place. We'll take our fish wire, we're gonna poke it in through the hole that we need our bolt to come out of. We're then gonna push it back or, or towards the front, whichever direction, until you get to the larger access hole here. Each side's gonna have a larger hole in it, and that's gonna be our access hole. Once we get our coiled wire pulled out of the access hole, we can start feeding our hardware into place. So we can go ahead and take our spacer. We're gonna slide that on. We're also going to slide on our star washer. And then we're gonna thread our bolt on. We'll push those up into the frame. And we can feed our bolt up into the frame. And then we're pulling it until it drops back down through this hole. And now there is a little tiny beam that's inside the frame right here. You can kind of feel it with your finger right there. So it can be a little difficult to get this in here. So you just want to jiggle it around, maybe push it back, then pull it real hard a few times to kind of get some speed at it. And eventually, you'll get it to drop down through the hole like that. Well, now we're just gonna repeat that same procedure to get it fed through this hole. And then I'll show you over on the other side, the two holes we're gonna use there. So on the passenger side, we're gonna be using these two rear holes, one just behind the hanger for your exhaust there, and then one just in front of it. That's the attachment where your heat shield used to have a screw going in it right there. So that's the two holes we're gonna feed that out of, and that's our access hole. When you're doing this side, I recommend doing the furthest one first, and then the closer one, that way this thing's not in the way of feeding in the further away one. So now we're gonna be trimming our heat shield and reinstalling it. This is the fastener here that went into this location. We're gonna save a portion of this, so that way the hitch can smash it up to hold it up there, but we're not gonna reinstall that fastener but we do need to trim out this section here for our bolt to pass through. So we're just gonna trim out maybe an inch or two right out of that section there. So it's really just this clean section right here that we're gonna be cutting out. It's a real small section. Just like that. And then just to help ensure that our hitch smashes this down properly, we're just gonna take off this bent edge here. It's not necessary, but That'll just help the hitch smash this flat up against the frame better. I'll now just test the fit of our heat shield. Make sure that it clears our bolt there. Everything looks pretty good there. So we'll just reinstall our fasteners, leaving this one out. And now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna lift our hitch into position. We need to get around our exhaust and our fascia here. So 
Once we get this around here, we can start to get this fed into our hardware. There we go, kind of pulling down and out on that. Well then make sure we go up around these attachment points located here. And then we can turn the hitch up now and carefully raise it up over our bolts. We don't want to push those back up into the frame. And there's a lot of hardware that goes on here, but for now we're just going to place a nut on there because this is a lot to hold. We'll be temporarily using this nut just to hold this up here. We'll get one of those started on each side to make it easier to install the rest of our hardware. So now that we've got at least a nut on there to hold this up, we can then take the full hardware and get that installed on the ones that don't have anything left. So we're gonna place two flat washers on first, then a lock washer, and then finally a nut. So you can see why this is a lot to hold and put up here. So it's usually just easier to put one nut on there first on each side, get that hardware held in place. And then what we can do is once we get this one on here like this, we can simply just go over to our other one here Take that nut off and then we'll put all that hardware on. It'll be the same for each one, two washers, a lock washer, and a nut. We can now take a 15 millimeter socket and snug these down. We can then go back and torque our hardware to the specifications outlined in our instructions. So now that our hitch is all tightened and torqued down, we can start reinstalling the rest of our components in reverse order of how we removed them. We're gonna go ahead and put that exhaust back up. Spray lubricant really comes in handy when doing this because you can just kind of lift it up, line up your attachments with the holes in the hanger, and then they just kind of just slide right on in there. We'll do the same thing with the other one here at the back. Next, we need to trim our undershield for our hitch to fit, and that's just gonna be this area right here. We're just gonna take this and open it up. We can clean it up a little better once we get the, kind of the middle section out of the way. And then we can come back in here and get this cleaned up a little better. We can now raise our under shield back into position. You do want to remember the back of it here does have to tuck up on top of the other one for those fasteners. So you got to kind of tuck that up and then you can curl kind of like that to get that to go around your hitch there. And then any of the locations it needs to go above the body there, we can move it up above those and then secure it with the push pins that we had removed. Now these ones here at the back, you won't probably want to hold off on these two here because those are for the other shield we'll have to install, but we can get the rest of the ones around the outside. And we can also install the bolts towards the front of the vehicle as well. So now we can hold it up here and mark it. There is also a diagram in your instructions, but it can be difficult to find center. So if we just hold it up here where it's supposed to go, we can kind of guarantee that we're putting it in a correct location. You can also find a diagram for this in your instructions. Now we'll just take our snips and we're gonna snip it out. And then the edges here, we're just gonna take a file, clean that up to make it nice and smooth, and we'll clean off all of our paint marks as well. And then we'll just check our fit. We got us a nice snug fit there. So we'll just snap it back into place now. I'm gonna line up those little pegs up there. And now when we were just test fitting this, we noticed that it hit right here on the hitch. So we're just gonna take this single fastener out and remove this piece. This will just kind of slide off here. It's just kind of hooked in there and we can pull that out of there. And you can see here where that piece was and it would hit on the uh, hitch right here. And now that we've got this snapped back into place, we can reinstall these fasteners that we had removed. And now at this point, we're ready to load up our favorite accessories and hit the road. And that completes our installation 
of Torque Lifts Eco Hitch on our 2015 Honda Civic.